this past tense. And I think many of us who are soaked in the presence of God long time until we think we are still soaked. But I want to speak from the perspective of present continuous tense. Amen. Soak me in the presence. Or soak me in your presence. I know many of us who have been able to be here, we've been looking at a place of how we can be in the presence of God, how we can dwell in the presence of God. And one of those areas is for us to come. In Kesha, I saw some few little children in the presence of God and they say, this is it. Amen. So that we can be able to enjoy being in the presence of God. I used to be able to take care of the cattle of my grandfather. And those times, only few people would spray their cattle or livestock with some spray of dip or what we call some acaricides to prevent um, the pests, seed pests or ticks, whichever, those are small things that come to them. So for us to go to the deep, particularly those of us who went the fast, you would take the livestock, if it was a donkey, no, they were not donkeys with my grandfather, but now we talk of a sheep, a goat, and then maybe cattle. And so they would stand there, and the water is there, well mixed, and the cow would look at the water and fear to get inside. But because of your loving kindness as a good farmer, you would literally whip this cow. Impossible, you beat it very hard and it goes into the water. And I'm telling you, if you are the first one and you are fearing to get into the water, you would actually go two rounds because the water was not mixed enough for you to be soaked for the pest to come away. Praise the Lord. Some of you who grew up in those times and they still maybe have some cattle tips, you know what I'm talking about. But for some of you who are born in town, you only see meat, you don't know how a cow looks like. You always just see cows walking and you don't know how they are made to be healthy. But I can tell you that the farmers would actually confirm that their animals were really soaked in, the, in that water. If you dropped maybe like the, the what do you call it? The, the opposite of a sheep is a goat. The goat were very tricky. And they jump out. <laughs> These ones were dropped with a lot of force. And they would be soaked properly so that they can be able to live better. Amen. When I look at this allegory, I see some sheep, I see some goats among us. Sometimes we just appear in the presence of God. And we are not soaked. Buanas we son. And that's why you would be told, remove your jackets. Because your jackets are hindering the deep to remove some pest from some of us. I have two. I've carried two of them. I'll be wearing after being soaked. <laughs> but some of us were wearing this even before God is soaking us in the presence of God. And sometimes many of us come to church. One of the things that I desire every day I go to church is that worship. Because it takes me in the presence of God. Uh, for many of us, when you are discouraged at work, when we lift up our hands, and this guy is actually able to take us in that moment, you feel you are connected. You get connected. I used to have one of my mentor pastors. If the worship were not able to connect, even if you gave him 30 minutes, he would ensure they sing another five minutes to ensure the congregation are soaked in the presence of God. And that you are able to experience his doing in your life. So this particular evening, tonight, I want us to look at how God can soak us in his presence. Soak me in your presence, in the present continuous tense. And I want us to look at Psalm chapter 27, a psalm of David, and David prays for the strength uh, from the Lord. The Bible says this from the book of Psalms 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Psalms 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When evil men advance against me to devour my flesh, when my enemies and my foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. Though an army beseech me, my heart will not fear. Though war break out against me, even then will I be confident. Verse 4. One thing I ask of the Lord, and this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, 
He's seeking that particular covering of him being in the presence of God all the days of his life. And he said, to gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek him in his temple. For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his tabernacle and set me high upon a rock. Then my head will be exalted above the enemies who surround me. At his tabernacle will I sacrifice with shouts of joy. I will seek, I will sing and make music to the Lord. Hear my voice when I call, O oh God. Be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says of you, seek his face. Uh, your face, Lord, I seek. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my helper. Do not reject me or forsake me, O oh God, my Savior. Though my father and my mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. Teach me your way, O oh Lord. Lead me in a straight path because of my oppressors. Do not turn over to the desire of my force, for false witnesses rise against me, breathing out violence. I am still confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. Amen? So that is David. And David, if David desired to be more in the presence of God, I don't know what I can desire. Because David was a man that used to take Saul to the presence of God. Many of you know that David would sing some harps of music. And when Saul had a problem, the problems would go. But here he shows a deep longing for the presence of God. And he desired to be there until one day his head would be exalted. <laughs> Amen. Some of you, Manza Guzama, one day before I finish, your head will be exalted. Because if somebody is coming to Nazama and is talking in his presence, in your presence, tell them the Lord will be able to exalt you. You lift your head up. So to soak is an act of immersing someone or something in a liquid for a period of time. Then God is able to do that. And I pray that this evening we will ask God to soak us in his presence, that we be in the presence of God and seek him. The psalmist hold a conversation with the Lord about his privileges. For many of you who have looked at this passage, he talks about his privileges. You know, when you are a privileged, you would go before God and tell him what he would do for you. And so he goes there and says, you are my light and my salvation. I will not fear anyone. He talks about his privileges. But now, David, even before he talks about anything else, he later now talks about his problems. And then... He shows how he's been able to persevere. And Psalm chapter 27 is characterized by very strong contracts, as if he's lamenting, as if he's praising the Lord. He's talking about being persecuted, as if he's trying to. He's talking about worship, and talks about worship. He's talking about deep contrast. That there was an enemy that is, you know, if you are denied by your father, it's a strong thing. And then he says, Lord, you receive me. Look at those contracts. He's soaked. So it's possible for us to be soaked, but where? Amen? Praise the Lord. Somebody has said there are only two people that you cannot cancel. One is a young lady who is looking after a man. And I can't remember the other one. But if I took only that example, <laughs> there are many of us that are very, they are chasing things. I'm telling you, even at night you just dream that you are going through all those deserts and mountains and you are gone. David talks and laments as if he's having a very big problem. Then he also goes before God and says, God, I love you. I'm soaked in you. So he's really contrasting himself here and there. But I don't want to dwell much on the weaknesses. I want to look at how David demonstrates He's longing to be in the presence of God. And he's saying, Lord, now let me be soaked in you. There are people and there are things that are chasing me, but I desire to be with you. So it is, it's a soaked psalm in the presence of God. The author is strongly uh, afflicted to the extent that he trusts in a strong God. Say amen. amen. Many of us as we are here, let me tell you, we are not cheating ourselves. We are here, some of us, and many of us, we want breakthrough. Amen. 
We want increment. We want uplifting. We want healing in Jesus' name. Amen? And so David is in this particular place, and he longs for God, and actually God alone. One as we son. So soaked for his privileges. We are soaked in the presence of God for our privileges. For many of us who are employed, you know that today is 31st. Even if tomorrow is our first day, you will check your bank account if you have not been paid today. It's your privilege to receive something. Amen. Because you trust strongly that you, unless they have sacked you, but without notice, you should receive your salary, then the notice come. There are privileges when we know who we are. And we are soaked in the presence of God for privileges. What are the privileges that David had? First one, he said, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? David actually demonstrates faith in the Lord. Praise the Lord. Faith itself is a privilege. There are some of us who don't have faith. We don't trust God for anything. And I suspect that's why many people don't come to pray, because they work on their own. Some of them have inherited things. David comes at a place and he says, and he's able to believe that he is soaked or he is living in the presence of God, and he has a privilege of faith. Paul writes and he says that faith is a substance of the things hoped for, yet not seen. Hebrews chapter 11. Why would actually even Paul write that? And he keeps on talking about the fathers of faith. It's good for us to know that for us to be soaked in the presence of God, we have faith. Are we men of faith? I was looking and waiting for any of you to text me whether this Kesha can be feasible because I was wondering whether it is security. I tried to call Koesh, I saw him, to advise me whether it would be safe for us to wait on God for the whole night. He didn't pick. And because none of you raised it, I said, we will just be there. It's faith. And we thank God we are here. Clap to the Lord. Yeah. Amen. <laughs> you didn't know what I was going through because none of my elders tried to poke me and tell me, Pastor, do you think it's safe? But I was looking in my heart. If somebody would ask me, I would have thought otherwise. Maybe the rev you didn't know. But faith is a substance. It's a privilege to have faith. It helps you to walk and go to work even when you know that things are not right. Praise the Lord. And it's a privilege to be soaked in the ways of God. For many of us, you have begun business. You continue to pay rent because one day you know that your business will rise up. Amen. Praise the Lord. Many of you continue to go before the presence of the Lord because we know when we are having a privilege of faith, God will do that. And actually, David assures to us, our salvation and our solid foundation is in the Lord when we have faith. He talks about salvation again in the same verse. For us to be saved is a privilege. It's a privilege for you to be saved. It's a privilege for you to call yourself as a child of God. Actually, I don't know whether some of us came here to pray and you are not saved. Because you may not ask if you don't know. One of the things I've told you that even your son or your daughter has a privilege when he comes home. He feels good to knock everywhere and you know this is my son a privilege of salvation. It makes you to ask God weird things. Many of you, if I listen to your prayers, except few of you who pray in tongues, you ask God so many big things. And he, he wonders, why is this man asking? That he wants a beast. A beast. Amen. Beast is a, there is, is a type of a car. Some of you don't know. There are things some of us ask the Lord. We ask God that one day, can I go to the moon? I saw people go to the mass, and I said, God, can I go to, that is Reverend Patrick, he like watching those things. You can imagine asking God to take you to mass when some of you want to go to the U.S., you know. It's a privilege of salvation that helps you to go before God and you ask some of the difficult things that you can ask. Praise the Lord. It's a privilege. And we are soaked to go before God to ask that. By the way, if you are come here to ask small things, you need to go home. Amen. <laughs> this is a privilege. It's a privilege to ask God that God give me, you know, 
why Elder is praying for us. He wants to see the three of us as pastors lifting this church and many things. It's a privilege that there are men of God that can do that. He sought for protection. In verse 2, he says, When evil men advance against me to devour my flesh, when my enemies and my foes attack me, they will stumble and fall. Okay? Though an enemy beseech me, my heart will not fear. Why is David soaked so much in the presence of God that he cannot fear the enemy? There was a day I used to live part of my life he, behind Nazarene University. That time, actually, for many of you who have lived in Nairobi, Rangau was not up. Rangau is that part of Nazarene. It used to be a forest. I used to be a caretaker of one of my friends. So there is a day it rained when I was going home, and we'd walk literally about 30 minutes to that backyard. And they used to have actually lions. So when it got evening, I was coming from Dagoret. I don't know, because that was the only home. I didn't know any other place. And so it rained in the evening, and uh, I knew there were, there were lions. So we lived with the Maasai, and they told us that when the lions come, don't run. Just look at them like this. <laughs> so that fateful evening, I was so fearful. So I took two stones in my hand, and I started walking home. See, when I see the lion, I will look at them like this. It was my first time to give an experiment that the Lord will protect me out of the lions. With my two stones in my hand, I didn't meet any lion. <laughs> the story ends there. The <laughs> Praise the Lord. There are things you get. Actually, I could not go to school. I had gone to check for my living certificate. Now, then I had to go home. Now, I am in between the forest, the university, and home. And of course, the lion somewhere. <laughs> the Lord is our salvation. He protects us. And it's a privilege. Praise the Lord. So for many of us who are drivers, you need to ask yourself, how many mileages do you drive every year? When you come every day, I go home sometimes, I see so many accidents. And some of those accidents is not because some people actually are regular drivers. Do you just ram in a vehicle? Some people you can ram in what you call multiple accidents. But God has protected us. We didn't manage, maybe, to give God thanks. The time we're giving God thanks, you may want to know that God protects you every day. Praise the Lord. Yeah. We buy vegetables from farmers, and sometimes we don't check. I told you, I see a lot of things. I do observe and learning. I went to Marikiti to buy some vegetables. I saw some chokoras. They pick the, the nyanyas, komutaro. Then when I see the kidogo, kidogo, na chafu. But some of you actually cook without washing well. And we thank God you are safe. The Lord protects you. And he's soaking us in his presence. And I looked at some of those things and some people were making some tomatoes. If you say tomatoes, I'm just telling you it's good for some of you who have a small farm, do your own farm. Some people even apply oil just to make it look smarter. So you think it's clean. The tomatoes have just been made appetizing for sight. It's not clean. But God protects our lives. Amen. Praise the Lord. Our children go home, go to school every day, and they, yet they go back well home very well. There was a time, actually, our children have been using a common transport. I'm not asking you to refuse common transport. And we used to have a lot of cough in our home. And many of you didn't know why I opted. Say, I would drop my kids. And there are times my kid would leave home earlier than me. But when I'm leaving 40 minutes later, I realize they are still on the way. <laughs> Things that we need to reflect. I say, what is this? Like, you know, my daughter is young. They are just playing. And, and some schools, not our schools. Yeah, ours, every seat, every child, every seat. But in some schools, they carry three kids in one seat. God protects our children in schools. Amen. Some of our young children don't wash their hands. And some of our teachers are not big. I can tell you, we are soaked in the presence of God to protect us. David was not talking about this as if it's just something like an illusion. Saul was after his life. For many of you have read the story. David would have just said, there is an enemy. Actually, he says enemies. But because Saul had an army. 
Otherwise, the great enemy of Saul, of David, was Saul. And so when he says, Lord, you are hiding me, he has a privilege to go before God. And for sure, God protected David. David actually at one point comes face to face with Saul, who is sleeping with his sword. And then he asks, you would have asked, say, what can I do with this sword? This is my enemy. I know what some of you would have done. And the Saul gets a small voice from the Lord. Just get the sword and go away. Look at that. It's God's protection. We are here to seek him. When we be in the presence of God, you will not fear the enemies. We will not fear competition. I know some of us who are doing business that others are doing. I see the empress. Don't fear. Even if we put so many churches here, because I've realized also churches are competing, the Lord will be there. Amen. He will protect us and walk with us. I know some of you have a call to begin churches. Please go and begin them. We are not going. The Lord will protect his people. Amen. Amen. There are privileges of the children of God. There are privileges of the presence of God. Verse 4, he talks about one thing I ask of the Lord. This is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. David is saying that I want to get in that deep and be there forever. He's longing for that. He's saying, soak me, Lord. I don't know what one of the prayers some of you pray when you are before God. Because many of us, actually, when we go before God, we are always asking money for what? Go before God and love him. When we are doing the revival, one of our ministers says, love the Lord, love this Lord. And I loved it when our elder was, it is one of the greatest ways to experience the breakthrough of, in the presence of God. By the way, we believe, for many of us who are farmers, I'm a good farmer, by the way. I don't have any animal, but I love watching animals, so I'm a good farmer theoretically. When an animal gets into the deep, ah, mukulima wa na fry. Ana fry, the pest will go away. Come and see this hotel to the zama. I'm telling you, this church will be well. Kuna watu wengine hapa mmepakwa mafuta kidogo. Munatakana muzame. Amen. Praise the Lord. Yeah, kuna watu adu jazama. He says, I want to dwell in that presence of God. I want to be deep inside that. So that we can reflect Christ. And David desires that. I don't know what you long every time you come before God. Sometimes we ask wrong things. I've seen some of you when you come for counseling. Please continue coming for counseling. When I ask you the first question, I see you asking the wrong thing. Even if I wanted to help you. Amen. You're asking me, Pastor, I want to see you. you say, you have my MPSA number? You see, you, you're asking wrongly. They say in missions, money comes second. Mission comes first. Amen. Buona I will teach you in an SMLD. We long wrong things. We long for wrong things. David is saying, one thing I ask for. Now, he has forgotten the other privileges that he has asked. It's one thing that I may be inside the presence of God. Amen. And things will be sorted. Things will be okay. He longs, he aingia kwa deep. Nime kwambia deep ndiyo ngombe wa zinasumbua kuingia. I want to be able to dwell here. Tukikubali kuingia kwa hii kitu. I'm telling you, things will be okay. He longs for the pavilion. He says, for a day in a, for in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. The, the pavilion there talks about his dwelling. He will keep me, he will hide me in the shelter of his tabernacle and set me high upon the rock. There is a privilege of being in the house of God. I am happy that we are meeting in this place. I know it's good to be elsewhere. We could be in our blanket. Both of us are here with my wife. Some of you are here and your husbands are sleeping. Now, whichever the way, it's good to be in the pavilion of God. Amen. It is a good thing. You say, hide me in your dwelling. It's a privilege to be in the house of God. For some of you who do not know how to pray, by the fact that you are here, it will help you. There is grace shared, a privilege of being in the tabernacle of God. Amen? It's just good to be in the presence of God. Sometimes you may look like a busybody, 
but it's a privilege that you are associated with God. And David says, I want to be under your shelter in Jesus' name. Amen? You've seen the way a chicken covers the, the chicks. It does well. And they just sleep. I see that some of you don't know that chickens sleep. When they do, those chicks are under the shelter of their mother, they just close their eyes. Let me tell you, even if the ego comes, the mother will always cover. And the children are okay. Praise the Lord. This is what David is saying, to be under the pavilion of God. You are soaked and you are protected. I know some of you do some chef. There are some chef people here who do catering. I've seen the good way of preserving meat, particularly chicken, which I love. They just put more honey and sugar around. You are hiding and you are soaking it in the presence of God. God can soak us in his pavilion and we will be safe in Jesus' name. Amen? What were the problems of this man? When we are before God, we are soaked, I said, for privileges. But we are also soaked against problems because problems are eminent. And I know this is the things that many of us, the doubt of security. In verse 5, he says that they are, they, I, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. Why? Because there are devourers out there. Why would God want us to go in his presence? Because out there, things are not good. Praise the Lord. For many of us who want to travel to Nairobi and Kisumu, you may want to take caution. Because there is doubt about your security as much as your children of God. But when you're in the presence of God, you actually see that God is able to soak you against problems. There are problems that face us every day. What about unbelief? Did David actually doubt God would be with him? He actually demonstrated that, and that's why I say it of contrast. He speaks as if, okay, the enemies, he said in verse 6, he says, um, verse 7, Hear my voice when I call. Be merciful to me and answer me. My heart says of you, seek his face. Okay? Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. How many of us have been praying to God and you feel like God is not hearing? Many of us. It's new I know some of us have got God answers. But let me tell you, when you are soaked in the presence of God, we are able to deal with unbelief. We also ask ourselves, I tried to answer in a different way, but only Reverend Patrick heard me when Elder asked, do you think pastors are human? We are not human because we are always good in the presence of God and things happen. And I was doing that as irony. Many times, even us who are strong, we get weak. Amen? So what nakua weak? Yeah, we get weak. We get weak, we get unbelief. And this is where David is. David had killed Goliath. How would a man who killed Goliath with a small stone again pray such a kind of a prayer? How? How dare would that be? But he believes that when he's soaked against, uh, when he's in God, problems. You know there are times you ask yourself, will I inherit the kingdom of God? This is a question many of us ask when you are alone. Now that maybe, you know, we are trying to look at certain thing in one of the classes and somebody was wondering how they lied on an interview to get the job. So after you get the job, ask yourself, how do I continue with the eternity in this particular context? And this, David seems like he's thinking that the Lord is going to reject me, that I may not be able to see the eternity. So he's fearing for his life now in physical as well as the life to come. But he trusts God that he can be able to be with him. He says, even though I have been forsaken by my father and by my mother, the Lord will receive me. Look at that. What is David saying here? He's saying, I am finding security in insecurity. Now I don't know whether that is English. That I'm actually finding food when there is no food. He says that. My father and my mother forsake me. For some of us who are 18, if your mother would send you away, it's one of the painful moments. I know some of us, like Elder Malet, I know your son is here. We take care of our sons until they are old. Elder Agnes, I'll come and pray to the inje. Now what do we want to Because we love our children. But some of us, if you are chased at 13, you would cry deeper than this. 
There is a greater love that God has been able to create between a father and a mother. But at times it's broken. When that is broken, David is saying, I have a hiding place. Amen. For some of us who don't have parents, you could be orphaned. I have a message for you. Seek the Lord. Amen. You get where you want to go. I have gone to places when the children go, actually, what they were there say, what is going to be the future of these children? Now, David assures himself that my father and my mother will forsake me, but my mind is immersed in the Lord. Praise the Lord. Buona sue son. Even some of us, when we are old, you know, I used to think that when you grow up and you lose your mother, you can just rest in peace. It's not easy. It's not easy. You, all of us, have a bond, and David soaks himself in the presence of the Lord. <coughs> what about the fear of the enemy? I say this because David mentioned up there when he talks about his privileges. But at times when you look at enemies, or, and he also looked at it in Psalms 23, verse 4, when he's talking about uh, Psalm 23, verse 4, and he's talking about walking through the valley of death, he says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no enemy. <coughs> David assures himself that when I'm soaked in the Lord, I will just walk through problems. Amen. I'm giving you an easy way of breakthrough. Just soak yourself in the Lord and things will be okay. I read another motivation book uh, by Pepe Minambo. Pepe Minambo looks like a Christian, but he speaks some few things that are not. He says that sometimes when things are too difficult, don't think, just stop. Stop thinking. And trust the Lord to move with him. Because some of you have been struggling on closed doors, and you don't have strength to go. The thing is, hide yourself in the Lord. Amen. We were used to be told when we are looking for our girls that um, ukikatiwa katika, ukiachwa achana. What it means is, when things find at themselves that are actually breaking, allow them break. Amen. So unapambana na nyungu na imepasuka, unashika two pieces. What David says here is, I want to contend and sit and be in the Lord. Amen. There are some of you who lost jobs, but you are still crying about that company. And it's gone, my brother. It's gone, my sister. I want to assure you, you are soaked against problems. God will open another door. Amen. You may want to think and say, how do I make and chart the way forward? David gets a place and he says, God, I'm just good in your presence, even though I'm in this. The fear of being deserted. I have mentioned about that. You are decided by the father and the mother. Our biological parents, our friends, our spiritual fathers can desert us. Our board members. Amen. Yeah, it's quite so frustrating if you are a chair and people don't give apology and they come. What you normally say is, I have not received the apology. Let's give them more time to come. Go and be with the Lord. Amen. Buenas we sana. Hallelujah. Amen. Some of you want to be bosses later, but it is, it is good. Thank you, elders, for beginning elders. Today you are not there. I am not good. Amen. By the way, the Agnes is flying to, the, to Nairobi for a meeting. We release you at one point, but I'm happy you are here. Let's appreciate her. It's good. Praise the Lord. There are things by fact of your presence, they make things worthwhile. Amen. And for some of us, you can actually be deserted. It is one of the ugly sins. Even in army, if you are going to shoot and you realize you are alone, it has become discouraging. This worship guy is here. Actually, the leader is one, but the backup sounds good every day. Praise the Lord. We get encouraged when you come to church. Leave alone offering. When you just come like this, this case, we didn't know who to come. Well, appreciate yourself also. Amen. When God is rejoicing up there, even as we are rejoicing, we are not deserted. Otherwise, I will question my calling, and I will go away. I don't know whether I would go away or I will go on sabbatical. But either of those, 
that can happen. But when we soak ourselves in the presence of God, we are sure that God is with us. He sent the angels, and some of you are part of that, and David sees that. He sees, actually, people that were not close to him being with him. That is what essentially he means when he says that my father and my mother may desert me, but the Lord will not forsake me. There are many of you who have been helped by people you don't know. I thank God I've been able to eat mursik here, I've eaten it. That is a good thing. And some of you are not related to me. It makes the worthwhile the kingdom of God. But I know some of us who stay and think that only when your tribe is good there is when good things are good. Again, again, I go to Philip even a kula kakuku. Amen. And I say, yes, this guy is not from my place. What that means is God is able to go with us when we are deserted. God's face denotes His personal face or being, such as longing for his dwelling. I wanted to actually put that when he says, show me your face, show me your presence. God is able to be with us and walk with us every day. We long for him. <coughs> In the last three verses, we see that David, after longing and being able to see how he can be deep with God, with knowing his privileges, having his problems, he perseveres. He soaked himself to persevere. One of the things that many of our young people are not making, they can't persevere. They cannot persevere. They are always impatient. They are impatient. And I pray that God will help many of us to persevere. Because without persevere and then, you are not able. I'm telling you, I want, if you have never gone to the deep, this remains my story. When a cow starts walking that deep, it must persevere a certain distance, floating actually. Walking but not stepping down. It must persevere to the end. Otherwise, it can actually swallow the deep. I don't know how God makes them to be. You must persevere. How many of us have been in the deep I'm talking about? Some of you have not. So I give you a name. My wife can take you to some. That is what she does. You go and check. The cow must persevere. Now, leave alone the cow. The goats, because they have short legs. <laughs> Praise the Lord. They have short legs. They must do, they make, yeah, they must persevere. Otherwise, they will die. But you know, you are being soaked so that you will be able to get there. My friend, salvation is not easy. I thank God even tonight. I want to tell you, some of you will struggle to be open your eyes. It calls for perseverance. So when we are asked to remove jackets and look and be able to dance, let's be. It makes something for us. Perseverance. We are soaked to persevere for the presence of God. What can actually denote perseverance? You believe, verse 13 of, of Psalms 27. I am still confident of this. Why are you still confident of this? There are enemies and he is questioning his strength. But he says this, I am still confident of this. Amen. They believe that you can make it in Jesus' name. The things have not worked, but I am still confident of this. Hallelujah. Now he says that, we are as strong as our faith. With it, we are soaked in his perseverance. John chapter 14, verse 1 to 2, when Jesus speaks about his eminent departure, he said, do not, be, do not doubt. He said, Believe in me and believe in the Father. What he's saying here is, what is our belief? We believe less. Many of us believe less in our God. We believe more in other things, but we believe less. We need to be soaked in the presence of God to believe his word. I'm still confident of this. I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Say amen. We will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. When people have given testimonies of what has happened, we can still have belief in him, and our faith can go. He perseveres with trust. Verse 14, he says, wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart. And he says, and wait for the Lord. You are trust. How much do you trust God? How much do you trust his word? He say, wait, wait. For many of us, we will continue to wait. Don't get tired to pray. A young girl came to me, it's not from this church. She said she wanted to see a counseling and she said, I am giving up, Pastor. I have been sick for a long time. 
And I say, you need to trust. So every day I would pray for God and say, Pastor, you are lying to me. But I was not lying. Even David said, trust. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It becomes very difficult to make some of us know that God will still visit you and do something for you. Because you think your age has put you off. Your problems have always pushed you. Sock for perseverance. Some of you have not persevered enough. And I want to speak to you. You need to be socked to trust the Lord. You need to trust you. You are, you are honor, you know. No farmer would want their sheep to die there. So you trust them. Even if they drop you there and they whip you. In fact, when you come there and they want the water to drop, they lock you inside. I know some of us become problematic like bulls. But we can trust that we get out of the nest and be out. Be of good courage. He says, be strong and take heart. You persevere. Find courage. Courage is one of the things that many of us lack. Why? Because problems can pin you down. Big people can pin you down. But be of good courage to persevere. Amen. Soak me in your presence. Oh, I had three, four points. I thought there were three. The last one. So the last P. Soak me in your presence. It's just verse 14, which means it's my conclusion. Desire to go in the courts of God. Be soaked in his presence in, is the greatest gift God wants us in this year, 2033. I believe being in Acacias, even some of you don't take being in Wednesday meetings, okay? Pray and fast a single day. You know, many of us, reading his word, get rid of the old sap and allow him to take over. I was telling our pastors, we've been doing our three-day and fast, prayer and fasting, so we were breaking today. Now I was telling him, uh, uh, the few of who are there, that when we were in college, we used to pray for, like daily. And we could see, when we were applying jobs when we were leaving school, we used to be invited for many interviews. I know some of you are not applying, and the interviews are not coming. And you are not praying. We are not seeking God enough. Amen. We need to seek his face Amen. enough. Amen? Amen? Seek God's approval, not the problems or privileges. David was a king. He asked for one seat of power. Huh? But to do, well, uh, but to do, into, to go in the house of God. That is to go in the house of God. His desire was to go in the presence of God. He seeks God's approval. He sees there are many things. I don't know when people go to seats of power. Many people don't want to. In fact, they say, for some of us who know the Lord, when we get in those positions, we forget God. And then if it's in the Kenyan context, you want to ask how many privileges do you have? A friend of mine was joking to me when we were looking at the appointment the president has been making. And he told me that because the seating allowance is around 18,000 per, per job, majority of our CAs sit every day. <laughs> don't, some of you don't know what I've said. They sit every day. I don't know where they get their agenda. They forget that. They want to actually increase the package. We thank God in Sitam we don't have sitting allowance. People sit every day. They ensure they sit at least 20 days in a month. Let's see God's approval. Let's not just be there to look like we want to exploit our companies, like exploit the position God has given us. Sorry for some of you who sit every day. I know there are bigger agendas, particularly for technical teams. But I want to see, I see David saying, um, I just want to be with you. I just want, to. in fact, if I was to preach another passage here, then it would be about Mary and Martha. Just want to sit at the feet of Jesus. He chooses that over any other thing that was more prestigious. There is a greater and a better prayer points. Lord, soak me in your presence. I want to know you more. I want to know your power. I want to enter into your presence. I want to pray more, just to adore you. A prayer of adoration opens gates. You know some of us, the way I said, we don't know how to ask. You cannot go in the rich man's house and you, without greeting and just say, give me. But when you go there and you tell me, you are a good man, you are a good man, what can I do for you? I just want to sit with you. And the good man say, what can I do for you, young man? He say, I want to ride in your boat, you know. You will get a boat ride by behaving well, praise the Lord. <laughs> we behave not well in the presence of God. We hire God to give us many things. 
We need to know how to soak ourselves in the presence of God. And God will be able to bless us more and greatly. We are impatient. We come to church, my praise and worship team. I know I've been with you. Somebody wrote a note, an anonymous, and say they have not sung for two years since they come here. My friend, just sing. The Lord would seek and bring you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I know some of you have sat here for a long time. You have not asked you to moderate. Don't worry. Feet, sit at the feet of Jesus. There are many great things to do. Sorry, the good thing, it was anonymous, so uh, that is done. But what I'm saying here is we need to seek the presence of God. Many of us want great things. But hey, let me confess, when I was in the Christian Union in school, I used to see the chairman preach almost every Sunday. Say, These people don't see us. Praise the Lord, my pastors, my elders. You may be asking yourself that question. Just be the feet of Jesus. Hallelujah. He would go from ministry to ministry. It was only brother so and so. What about us? One as we son. Hatuonekanangi. Na umungu wa gizungumuza. Imagina yetu wa itokezei. A very bad betting game. Be just at the presence of God. Amen. At home, some of us, by any default, this month, by the way, we want to fix, to reflect, it's our children month in April. But the men of us who have many children, you realize that every time you want to, uh, to send a child, you only send one. Anyway, because they are children. But let me say, if you are the child, 